Hey everybody, my name is Jim Farmer. I'm the festival director of Out on Film. Um, the sponsor of tonight's In Conversation is Atlanta Pride. So thank you Atlanta Pride for making this possible. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome Margaret Cho. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Well, before we start talking about the film, I, wanna, I have to ask you, this has been such a crazy year. How have you been navigating this year personally and professionally? Well, um, it's been really insane. Um, I, I think that, uh, of course, this pandemic could have been handled much more um, gracefully and much more efficiently if we'd had a real uh, leadership in place. Um, Certainly, it's been a very disappointing time, um, it, but uh, I feel like now, you know, a lot of my energy is being put into making sure that we can uh, have a new administration in place and getting people out there to vote, um, whether that's out to their mailbox or, you know, out to um, getting on Zoom and getting onto uh, Biden-Harris um, sort of people get, getting the message out, getting sort of these campaign things going. Um, so that, that's kind of been my last few weeks, actually. But um, it's been a really interesting time. I've had a lot of my uh, tour dates canceled, unfortunately, uh, or actually postponed until next year or until when we can do this again. Um, so I've just been in my house um, cooking. I've been with my dog, uh, Lucia. Can you okay. see back here? Hello. She's working on a treat. Okay. Um, and uh, we, um, we're here, we're locked down, um, but going out to protest and wondering if, um, you know, if you use milk, uh, that gets rid of tear gas in your eyes. But I only have oat milk. Okay. I'm like, mm, does, that, does that do anything for tear gas? I don't know. We'll try it. <laughs> uh, so um, I watched... I'm that I want. I'm the one that I want again this morning. I, it, it seems hard to believe that it's been 20 years. It's incredible. It's really incredible, but it feels uh, really exciting. Um, I watched it, and it, it's it's. I I don't know. Like I I have uh, so much ex excitement about stand up comedy. I still love doing it, and I still have the same excitement around it. It makes me really miss it. It's the one constant in my life, uh, except for now, of course. Um, but it's the one thing that I've kept doing um, throughout this time, except for in this pandemic. So um, it just reminds me of how much I, I really am grateful for it and how much it's sort of changed me and helped me grow up as a person. So I, I really love stand-up comedy and I can't wait to get back to it. Great. You were, you were well known before the film, but can you talk a little bit about what I'm the one that I want did for your career? It really helped me kind of understand myself as a stand-up comedian and kind of helped me understand how you could uh, take uh, what really was sort of um, interpreted for my career as sort of a grand failure and turn it into a success. You know, I had been really largely known before that as a television star, and I had the first Asian-American television show, All-American Girl, which did not become a very successful show. Unfortunately, now in hindsight, I look back and see, well, it was the, the catalyst to help me write this show, which became a stand-up comedy film. And that is, I'm the one that I want. And that, that, you know, really actually inspired a lot of other comedians to do these specials, who um, create these kinds of like big platforms for themselves. And, and now, um, you know, we have so many great comedians who saw this show, saw this movie, and really were inspired from it. So I think that's really exciting. A lot of, um, not just comedians of color, not just women, but a lot of queer comedians as well. So I feel like this film did a lot for representation within comedy. And I'm really, I'm, I mean, you know, it's not necessarily the film, but the legacy of people who were inspired by it that I think is the true um, accomplishment of, of what this film did. Do you think that a lot of people knew all that was going on behind the scenes with All-American Girl? I don't know, because it was really, I mean, television was so different then because we didn't have social media. I mean, it's hard to think about a world without social media. 
when um, show business was really a very different uh, experience. You know, you had um, show business was something that was really a very protected entity. And, you know, you had a very um, kind of limited amount of story and content coming out from people who were performers. It was all really uh, from um, a perspective of uh, kind of uh, publicists and agents and managers kind of, kind of creating a story for artists to tell on a, on a grander scale. And so you didn't have um, kind of personal storytelling and narrative that we have in social media that's really up to the minute today, like we have now. So it was a really unusual thing to get an insider view of what goes on in Hollywood. At that time, I think it was really this sort of revelatory thing to have things like the E! True Hollywood Story, which was just kind of behind the music era. So this was like a very like kind of new um, thing of like looking behind the scenes of Hollywood and kind of into um, the reality of what television can do. And, you know, we were just starting to understand the damaging effect of things like eating disorders, things um, like sexual abuse, things like um, sexual harassment, things like casting couch, things like the Me Too movement hadn't occurred yet. So yeah. we were trying to figure out a way to talk about it, but we didn't even have the language to. And even with this thing about like not having representation, the idea of having an Asian American television show and it being the first one was such a new idea. It was so hard to even comprehend that you could have one, you know? And so that was, so difficult to step into those shoes to be the first to do it. It was really something kind of extraordinary. And, um, and to be a really young person doing it and to be a queer young person doing it was very difficult. I realize it more now as I look back how hard all of that was. And so this film really brings it all back to me. Sure. When I watched the film again this morning, it kind of struck me that some of the issues that you seem to be dealing with back then are still sort of going on today. There's so much um, that hasn't been resolved. There's so much about race. There's so much about sexism. There's so much about body shaming, body issues, body mm -hmm. dysmorphia. There's so much in there that has not been resolved. And um, in many aspects, I think the issues around uh, race and all of that has actually gotten more complicated and much more divisive in, in a lot of ways. I think that it's really strange. You think that we should have resolved so much. It's been so long, but we haven't resolved very much, but we maybe know more now. We know more about what goes on and maybe we know more uh, of sort of what problems exist, but we don't know how to solve them yet. Where are we now in terms of LGBT representation? I think that we are in a better place in terms of gayness. Like yeah. gayness is like on fire. Like I'm like so into the gay life. Like queerness is so exciting. In this era where we're finding a space of redefining queerness in language and pronouns, in the non-binary experience, in humor, in identity, in gender. There's so much inventiveness and excitement going on there. And we're learning so much from young people. I, I really am excited about the future of our gay life. That is really promising. I think when we're going towards the future and that it's really exciting. Where I fear is in our, um, you know, just in the last, you know, with, with the Supreme Court, just in the last, you know, with the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that, that to me is really frightening. The idea of the loss of certain liberties around queerness, around our rights, around who we are and how we're treated in this country and how we're perceived. It's like this idea of where we've come, even from 
2015. This is all kind of going to be questioned right now because we were sort of entering this era of we don't know what's going to happen at this juncture. So it's a very strange kind of place to be in because we're so far ahead in so many ways. And then we're also so unsure. So I think it's a great time to be queer, but it's also very scary. Exactly, exactly. And at a time when other celebrities were maybe a little skittish about being so outspoken, why has it always been so important for you to be such an advocate for LGBTQ rights? Well, my own queerness has always been something that I have treasured. And I think like, you know, you can take the 90s lesbian out of the 90s, <laughs> but you can never <laughs> stop coming out. When you're like, when you come out in the 90s as a lesbian, you'll never stop coming out. Like when you put on those like long denim blue jean shorts, like, you know, I was the kind of like lesbian that had like, the cutoffs, but cut off real long, like around the knees. So they were almost capri pants, but not quite like the real long, like it's like when you, you know, you're like lesbian, if you have like really long jean cutoffs, but you're not drinking Mountain Dew, like it's a very, it's if you're not in the South, but you have long cutoffs, there's lesbian in you somewhere. And, um, but it was so like, when you have that and a black tank top and it's the nineties, and you're in the mission in San Francisco, you will never stop coming out, no matter what. So I am in this process of never not, I'm always coming out to some degree. Like there's always some point in the day where I come out to somebody, even if it's to this little dog or somebody, like I'm always coming out about something. And you know, you, you constantly like reveal yourself in different levels of intimacy to yourself or to uh, your partner or to, um, your animals or you know just to whoever's there because it's that revelatory thing it's a constant revolution and so i think queerness is really it's about that revolution and about that that um, discovery so i think it's really important and I, and I think it keeps you young is that process of continuing to come out and continuing to accept i mean in terms of what does it mean for you to be such a role model for our community I don't know if it's like, I don't know if it's like most, I don't know if it's like role model, but to me, it's like really important to be of service. Like I think the older you are in gay life, the more you have to be in service. Like I remember like in the early nineties, there was this woman named Brownie Mary who was like a weed activist and she would give like um, weed brownies to um, AIDS hospices so that all the people who were dying in hospice could be um, eating these like brownies and they were so strong you would be high for like days but you would be happy and then you could eat you know and this is like a very big deal like in the early 90s like when a lot of people were dying from AIDS and who and the weed wasn't legal then so she kept getting arrested and she was old. She was like really old. Like I think at that point, she was probably at least in her eighties at that point. And she'd been doing it since like the seventies. And so, you know, Brownie Mary was very famous. And I met her one time, like walking up a hill, uh, up going like up in the Castro and she gave me one of her brownies. And I think I was high for like a week. And it just really reminded me how much I needed to be in service to like queerness and to the older you are, the more you have to just work for the community because it keeps you young. Like if you are like working towards gayness, like you just, you know, it's like you got to give back somehow. And that's sort of Brownie Mary's example. Yeah. This is, this is embarrassing for me to admit, but sometimes when I'm really busy or sometimes when I'm in a bad mood, I have to go to YouTube and hear, hi, my name is Gwen, just to, just to <laughs> put a smile on my face. I'm sure you hear that all the time. It's fun. <laughs> but I'm just, I've always been curious, what happened to Gwen? Where, where, I mean, do you ever bring her? I know, I'm sure she's there. I'm sure she's down there. She's probably at the hospital. I mean, I think she's also in service of other vaginas or, you know, I mean, what a great lady. 
What a great lady. I think that's great. Like just amazing. And, you know, probably an essential worker yeah. down there washing the vaginas of people. That's great. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to compose myself. I got, <laughs> there, there's so much I want to ask you, but, but I, I do want to ask you about one of my favorite movies. It's my party. I mean, it's my party. Mm -hmm. it's such an amazing ensemble. Do you still stay in touch with a lot of those people? Um, I uh, spoke to Randall, the director and writer of the film, um, and uh, he's awesome. Yeah. And he uh, he's a great he he's great. He um, he also uh, directed Grease. Yeah. Um, and he he's he's just he's hilarious and a lot of fun. And and it was a very different film for him to make. Um, it's actually it's his story, and um, he is a you know the survivor he he's sort of the sort of the gregory harrison character yeah. and um it's it's a beautiful film um dennis christopher um every once in a while i'll see him i've done shows with him i've done like um productions with him um i did a, um sort of a tv thing a movie tv movie thing called the lost room like a weird sci-fi thing with him he's a crazy amazing actor really cool really interesting um, I've seen Olivia Newton-John <laughs> socially <laughs> around. It was, um, Roddy McDowell's last movie, yeah. which is really cool. Um, he, he was wearing like a, a burgundy blazer that was velvet and like a gray, like turtleneck. I mean, he was just so elegant and, um, his hair was the same color as his like gray turtleneck. I mean, that's like, that's a real like gay royalty stuff you know uh but um and i think nina foch nina foch is in it too like all these like crazy classic gay kind of icons are in that movie um but yeah i had a great time making it and uh so every once in a while i'll see um some of the people that sort of are surrounded that film but yeah we had a we had a really wonderful time making it in and uh it was like really mid 90s crazy um indie filmmaking but lots of fun we hosted um randall kleiser and gregory harrison a few years ago for a retrospective of that film and that that film can still just punch you in the stomach i mean the whole film is amazing but the scene where with lee grant at the end where she's bawling that that just tears me up it really does it's a beautiful film and it's one of those things there was this tiny kind of time where there's quite a few powerful films that are about AIDS that um really people really remember like Longtime Companion and then of course later Angels in America but I, I do think It's My Party was really one of those films that really it really touches people who were there you know we were there for the experience and it's a, it's a really a, a beautiful movie, um, but yeah, Lee Grant is great, and uh, she's I think she's a really amazing actress, and and I really I really enjoyed working with her too. She's awesome. Great. Let's talk Drop Dead Diva. So, um, what are your what are your thoughts on you know that that show lasted quite a while? What are your thoughts on the success of that series? Well, I loved working on Drop Dead Diva. I loved living in Atlanta. I loved living um, in Peachtree City. And then I moved to um, the uh, Virginia Highlands and I, I lived right next to, I live right next to Soto Soto. I do miss, I, I do miss Little Five Points and I miss being um, all over, you know, Peachtree. And I, 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 I really took to Atlanta, like I just, you know, like I miss all of those places, you know, like the Claremont Lounge and, and Blake's and, and Bulldogs and all of those places I really, I really took to. So I, I feel sort of like sad I, I haven't been back, you know, but it was right when um, really like big Hollywood production started there and, and you know, things were starting to take off. And uh, so it's, um, it's quite a big industry now. Yeah. And there's so much production there. So hopefully I'll be back there. But I had a great time on that show. Um, lots of lots of great gay icons on that too, uh, like Liza Minnelli. And um, of course, was Joan Rivers was amazing on that show. Um, so fun to be on there with her. And um, so that was really great too. And that show itself was really kind of groundbreaking. It was a beautiful show. And it was also the first time that was like, 
you know, for me experiencing a procedural, like a crime procedural, because to me, it's like, that's super new too. So, um, cause that, that, that sort of st st storytelling is so interesting where you're really kind of the, the reveal of like the courtroom and the, the sort of crime connections and all of that was, you know, to me, that was just such an interesting world. So it also opened up that kind of avenue of like wanting to do more kind of shows like that. And, and so that was really fun. Did you, when you were in Atlanta, it seems like a rite of passage for people new to Atlanta or is going to swing in Richards. Do you, did you ever go to Oh, yes. Yes. Um, many times <laughs> you always end up there. Um, you always, it, it, it's like a kind, it's, it, it's sort of, um, I always like the ones, there's always the guy that looks like Mr. Burns that's always just sort of in the corner, kind of just like, you know, like he's <laughs> really focused on the dancer. And it's just like very, like he just is so into it and it's so sweet. And um, there's fewer and fewer uh, bachelorette parties. I think that like every time I've gone progressively over the years, like, a, for a long time, it was quite a few like women's parties, like, but now, like, or the later years that I was going, it was just like, we're not going to, we're not going to waste time of women going there. It's just going to be just men now. <laughs> Every time I would go, it was always with men. And I don't know what the ruse is about women going. I mean, I, I could see women going to like Thunder from Down Under. And stuff, but Swinging Richard, there's something about Swinging Richard where it, I guess, you know, the, like a male strip club is, it's sort of like Knob Hill Cinema, which is, um, is San Francisco uh, male dancing establishment, mm. which has never catered to a, a bachelorette party. It's never pretended to sort of be like a Thunder from Down Under, which Thunder from Down Under, who were also on um, the, uh, uh, the show with Drop to Diva, they, they made a couple of appearances. They uh, were fine gentlemen. They had the most beautifully architectural eyebrows I'd ever seen on anybody, male or female, any, anybody. I mean, just the most beautifully, it, it was just arched eyebrows like forever, I, I, perfect. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I remember hearing the story of Tiffany Haddish taking Billy Porter to Swingin' Riches. I would have paid to have been there that night. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. I think that they would be a really good um, team to go watch, uh, go to Swingin' Riches with. I think that, I mean, Swingin' Riches is a lot of fun. I do love um, like really baggy jeans on the pole. Like when the guys are super masculine like that, it's like at Bulldogs, you know, the guys are like super hyper masculine so it's a funny thing when they're um gay because the hyper masculine it sort of recalls that sort of side of like the tom of finland it's like that leather side where you have this sort of hyper, hyper masculinity um that's juxtaposed with the gayness which to me i think is really interesting i think it's really beautiful you made show dependent while you were here Yes, yes. Um, I, I loved uh, making the record there. I, I got to go um, to, uh, at, at, I was in Atlanta and then I got to drive up to Nashville um, many a time to work, uh, which was uh, really great to record there, up, up there. And um, so it was a perfect journey um, to do. And um, so I love that. And uh, so, you know, it's, a, and Atlanta itself is a beautiful place to make music. And and a great music city. And, and I just, I had a wonderful time. I was a very creative, creative being there. We have a couple of questions from uh, the chat. Um, when do you think, obviously no one knows what's going on with COVID right now, but when do you think you'll personally be comfortable going out on the road again? I would love to go out. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to endanger anybody because I know the thing is, is that I feel like I've also, I have a lot of like understanding around, I feel like in the gay community, we get a pandemic. We've been through a pandemic. This is like our second time through. Like we know we lived it. 
and we get it and we know how to live through it and we know how to survive a plague and we we've done this before and so we can be patient and ride it out and um so we have the resilience to do it but it said like i really miss doing comedy and so i have to figure it out but i will do it as soon as we can do it maybe we'll figure something out i like the idea of like the drive-in because i'm such a 70s kid and i do love a drive-in movie um but uh so we'll see hopefully someday we have another question a lot of people have been learning new hobbies or just honing some skills what they've been and said is there anything in particular you've been trying to learn or, or do different since you've been home so much um i have been uh cooking and eating okay. i'm actually making sticky rice right now in a thai steamer basket no yeah. less i mean i'm doing it for real for real <laughs> fr fr for real for reals in in a basket with cloth for reals <laughs> so like i'm cooking a lot i'm eating a lot it shows and it's good and i think it's like you know i the thing about what what's happening right now is that i i have been like touring and being on the road for the last 35 years or whatever so i've never really like spent any time at home and so this is like kind of the opportunity to get to do that and I love eating and I love cooking and, and I haven't done that at all. So finally, I've actually like unpacked for the first time in my adult, adult life and cooking, which is actually nice. So that's good. Another question. Have you considered doing a show via Zoom? Oh yes, I've done a couple of shows um, via Zoom and via uh, StreamYard and via uh, Instagram Live and um, I've done a few on, uh, yeah, of like just on these kinds of platforms. So I'll definitely do some more. I know that I'm getting um, more and more requests to do them. So yes, I, I think that that will be more of a regular thing. Okay, we, we briefly talked about this earlier, but it's such a uncertain time right now in our community, especially politically. What kind of advice do you have for people in terms of trying to stay positive? Well, I think that what we have to know is that we are really experiencing some great change and that can be really, really scary. And yet that it's very hopeful too, and that we can do this and we can do anything. As a community, I've seen so much of us, you know, we've, we've gone through so much. And again, you know, we have been through a plague Yes. and survived it and you know we've come back from the brink of practically extinction so this is really important to remember and um you know we have a new vibrancy and a new hope and a new a whole new generation of really smart people smart kids who know what they're doing who have so much knowledge and so much political awareness and and then they're just so smart about what they're doing and intersectionality and understanding of others and they're teaching us you know they're teaching all the old dogs all the new tricks which i think is really great so i i just look to young people i'm looking towards like this so exciting idea that we could possibly live in a world without systemic racism that we could actually figure out how we got this way and figure out a world where we're not being lied to by our government that we're not being lied to about racism that we're not seeing people black people being killed by the police this is a really important thing i mean this is a way that we can change um so i'm i'm really looking forward to um an america which can have like that that truth that we're not going to kill people sure we have someone asking about uh john roberts have you been in touch with him yes i talked to him yesterday okay <laughs> i you know, you have to talk to your friend. We, we're, um, he, he is the best and he is hilarious. And we were just, we always, I think we just have to laugh too. I think when you're really just scared, the best thing to do is laugh. And so that's what I do is I reach out to friends who make me laugh a lot. Is it surreal hearing him 
do his mother's voice and attach it to an animated character? Um, I don't know. I, cause I know his mother, um, uh, uh, John Roberts plays, um, the mom on Bob's burgers. And so, uh, a lot of people know him as Linda from yeah. Bob's burgers, but it's actually the, a very, very direct impression of his own mother. Um, who I also know, who's also a friend. So it's very funny. It's he's, ve but he's a very, very funny guy. And uh, he and I toured together for many years too. And uh, I just, I adore him and I miss him a lot. He was actually one of the last people I saw before lockdown. Okay. So I, I really, I really miss him. And um, hopefully we'll get to see him soon. Another gentleman just, this isn't, this is just a comment. He says that he um, met you at Laughing Skull. He's hoping eventually you might be able to come back to Atlanta and, and do Laughing Skull again. So. Oh gosh, I love the Laughing Skull. The Laughing Skull is a great club that's inside the Vortex, which is a place I used to live above the Vortex. That's how peach tree I am. I would live upstairs on the eighth floor <laughs> of the building above the Vortex. And it's, the best and it smells like bacon up there it's really good but the the a comedy club is on the on the it's all, all like right behind the bathrooms if you keep going get back behind the vortex it's right back there 73 seats it's a great club we have one more question from the comments what are your thoughts on that pink skirt and pants ensemble you wore during i'm the one that i want <laughs> i actually love that pink skirt and pants ensemble it actually kind of holds up it's um uh really interesting because it's all i had just come back from tibet so i wanted to wear something that was sort of like uh a little bit um it kind of was like uniform dressing but it was a little bit like it could be almost like a uh kind of a tie but also tibetan kind of outfit like looked like a national costume from a country that we don't know but it was very um it was exciting. I, I, I'm, I'm like into that outfit. I think I have it still somewhere. I'm sure I do. I, I looked up IMDb and you have a lot of upcoming projects. Can you talk a little bit about some of the projects you have coming up? Well, I, um, I have a movie that's actually out uh, really, really soon. The trailer's out. Um, it's called Over the Moon. It's on Netflix. It's an animated feature. It's a beautiful uh, Asian American story um it's 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 uh it's really really sweet and um so it's it's with ken jong and philippa sue and a lot of amazing amazing talented asian americans uh, john Cho's in there um just everybody everybody it's super cool um so i have a voice in there and i i play a couple of characters actually um i i think it's really i think it's a beautiful film so it's over the mountains out I, i'm doing a new film I'm starting it next week. Uh, I'm going, it's a great drag queen. He's so funny, Charles Bush. He's so great. So I'm doing a film with him called The Sixth Reel. So I'm heading into quarantine to do that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there's lots of stuff coming. So yeah, I'm, I'm working, but I'm not um, doing stand-up exactly. <laughs> but I will. Congratulations on being able to work. So. Thank you. Before we finish tonight, I did want to present this to you. This is um, the Out on Film Icon Award, which we will get to you. Um, thank you. You know, thank you on behalf of all of us. You know, thank you personally and professionally for all that you've done for our community. And just thanks for always being there. And that's, that's really, thank you so much. So. Thank you. Well, I'm so proud. I'm so glad to be here. And thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, Out on Film runs through October 4th, so please check out the rest of our schedule. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you.